Welcome to On the Road with Matty Rocks, live on location at Station 4 in St. Paul, Minnesota, joined by special guest Paolo Gregoletto, bassist for the band Trivium. Paolo, thanks for uh, joining me tonight. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, the last time you and I were supposed to sit down was uh, late last year, but I fell sick after uh, after coming back from the NAM convention. Was, what show was that? That uh, it was at uh, First Avenue. Oh, with Inflames? Yes. Yeah. So I did not want to get you guys sick, so Appreciate I had to decline that. I had to turn down that uh, interview. So here we are in a rescheduled interview, and I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to sit down with me. Um, you guys are currently touring throughout the U.S. on some one-offs. Um, this is your 14th stop this year. Um, how's the tour going so far? It's been amazing. Um, a lot of the shows, in particular the Rock Fest we've been playing, like yesterday in Kansas City, they've just been like this new world opened up for us. Um, I mean... I guess you could describe it as the radio rock world. We've never really been into that side of things, and it's just all these new people being exposed to our music. And yesterday was incredible. It was like when we played, there was about 20,000 people at our stage. But due to some unfortunate uh, circumstances on the main stage, the power went out, and so they broadcast our performance over at the main stage with the music coming through the PA. So it was like we were playing on two different stages at once. So all these people got to see this, you know, band they've never heard of doing our thing. You know, and we just went out there and rocked, rocked as hard as we could. Double the exposure. Yeah, it really, it really was. And from what I'm, um, what I've learned from these festivals is that I guess uh, they're sort of the tastemaker for some of the rock stations around the country is like you know all these bands do these festivals and they're kind of like the big stops along the way like rock on the range is this weekend and we're doing that and then rock Oklahoma. so we're very excited to be on them and also the five finger off dates and the best are these these little one-off off dates that we're doing you know our long ass headlining sets very nice uh trivium is gearing up for the trespass america tour which kicks <laughs> off in july uh 25 leg yeah. tour um, you're going to be joining some amazing acts like Five Finger, uh, Pop Evil, Kill Switch Engine, Amur, God Forbid, and many more. How cool is that? It's great. I mean, God Forbid and Kill Switch Engage have been two bands that we've had a, a pretty long history with. I mean, Kill Switch Engage, Alive or Just Breathing is definitely a monumental album on us. I mean, it really influenced us. It, they were just one of the first new generations of metal bands to really crack through, and they were sort of the... You know when the when new metal was starting to die off, they were the the nail in the coffin, in my opinion, on that. And it, it sent bands back towards wanting to play, you know, killer riffs. And you know, Jesse Leach being back with them is amazing. I mean, never got to see them with with Jesse in the band, so it's going to be awesome seeing them. And God forbid, God, I've known those guys since I was fifteen. You know, a couple of us played local sh lo our local show back in the day where they were coming through town and. Those guys have been at it forever, and I'm glad that they're finally getting a little bit of the respect they deserve. They're an amazing band, great new album, and obviously Five Finger Death Punch has been killing it. Yes. And we hadn't toured with them since 2007. We did Family Values when they first started. And they've come such a long way, and, I, and I'm really happy that a band playing heavy music is getting played on the radio and is really opening up that world to bands like us which, you know, I, I think any band doing good at radio that's heavy and not like the sappy radio rock, right. vanilla rock stuff right. is like good, in my opinion. You Same with like, you know, Avenged Sevenfold doing great. It, it really does help. And, and the more the merrier, man, the more bands that can crack the mainstream radio and playing heavier music and getting people more into that again is great, in my opinion. Paulo, take uh, Matty Rock's listeners back to the early years of your life and give us an insight how you got involved in music. Um, I got involved in music, I guess I got my start was when I wanted to play this thing called the Italian Festival at uh, my middle school. And actually Nick was the first dude I ever played in a band with. We just wanted to play some covers and you know have a good time playing just as, as friends, nothing too serious. And then once we played that show, it was... After we played live, we're like, wow, this is amazing. And me and Nick always stuck with it. Our other two friends ended up kind of not being into it as much. So we just kind of started our own band. And um, I don't know, it's just, I, I was always, once I learned, once I really started to master playing an instrument and it wasn't like, 
man, this is challenging. I, I hate practicing. And it was like, oh, yeah, picking up the bass and learning songs, and it was a little easier. I, I've been in, into it since then, and I've never wanted to do anything else. More. Is there music in the family? Uh, actually, my grandfather on my mom's side has been playing piano for about last well, 75 years, okay. and he's incredible. He was actually... Um, the one who bought me my first, not my first bass, but my first actual guitar, which okay. I still have. It's a red, old, bronze series Warlock. And that was the first guitar I ever had to write songs on. And, you know, some of the first songs I wrote with Trivium were written on that song. And it's cool that that coming from, I guess, a musical family that he was able to give that to me and I was able to continue the, the kind of the family legacy of playing right music. Hang on to that warlock. Oh, definitely. I, I don't sell any of my, my old basses or guitars. Um, in 2004, you joined Trivium. Mm-hmm. Um, explained how did you get involved with the whole Trivium project? How did mm-hmm. it come to be? We had played a couple shows locally in Florida, and my mother at the time was helping my band. I mean, that was our management. That was the, you know, pretty much I, when I was playing local bands, I was like 15 or 16, so... I couldn't just go to a bar or go to a club and go, I'd like to play on the show because you'd usually have to be 18 to get in. So she was sort of our ambassador to kind of get us into the to the shows and all that stuff. And at the same time, it was sort of the same situation with Trivium, you know, everyone being young. And Matt's dad was helping out with, uh, with Trivium. And once we met, we were like, whoa, this is cool. Two bands doing sort of a similar thing, similar age range. So we kind of kept in contact that way. And right before I was supposed to start college, it was like right after I graduated, I was kind of done with the situation I was in with my band. I'd been doing the same thing for six years, and I was the only real permanent member. It was always changing, and I was just getting tired of people not being serious. And it just so happened that Trivium had lost Brent as the bass player. He didn't want to do it. He wasn't into touring. And they had a fill-in for the tour that they were doing, and I I was like, hey, I'm going to be up actually recording a demo with Jason Sukoff and you guys are going to be home, you know, maybe we can jam a little bit and see what happens. And that was really how it all came about. It was, it was pretty crazy how it worked out that way. Very nice. Uh, interesting story. And then right after that, you went on tour with Machine Head. Yeah, that was the, that was the tour that we rehearsed for, for like two weeks, three weeks, and then just went right out and it was, it was unreal. And you know, the fact that, like, to tour with Machine Head and Chimera for my first tour, that right. was just insane. Very nice. What is the history behind the trivia name? Where did it come from? I believe the original singer, who I've never met, um, for some reason, picked that name. I'm not sure what inspired him to pick Trivium, but that was where it came from. And then, like, two weeks later, I guess, there was a difference in opinions of what style of music Trivium was going to be, and I guess he was gone, but the name stayed. Um, when you started with Trivium, you were a pick user. Yeah. And then over time, you transitioned over the, to the plucking method. Well, I, I, had, uh, I had learned how to play with my fingers. I, the only reason I started playing with a pick was that it was just so much triplet playing in the stuff, especially with what was on Ascendancy, which we were going to record like a month or two after joining. That was just the only way I could really play that fast at the time I mean I could play with my fingers but I couldn't do those triplets and that was just the way I had to do it but I, I always knew I wanted to go back to it it just I like the sound I like the playing better with my fingers and once I got the third finger down I just kept practicing and by the time we recorded the crusade I didn't need a pick anymore right. so it was nice to to transition back to how I started and I definitely recommend for any bass players to learn that way even if even if you're into playing a pick it's always good to know how to play both ways right. good information uh, to you bass players out there uh what is the typical warm-up routine for you before you take the stage hmm. uh i'm not really like super into warming up for like an hour and a half or two hours before i mean i have a pretty set schedule of an hour before i'll do my vocal warm-ups i'll do a little bit of stretching um and really honestly i before I go up on stage, I'll go up to the stage about 15, 20 minutes before if I can, and I'll just start playing my bass because I don't like to warm up an hour or two before and then cool down and then have to go play. I feel like after you know two hours, it's like you've lost that warm up, and I have to warm up right before, so I'm extra limber when I play. 
Um, everyone has musical influences. Uh, who are some of your musical influences that have helped shape who you are as a bass player? When I got into like metal music, I sort of, I mean, it was Metallica and Iron Maiden and you know Cliff Burton and Jason Newstead, Steve Harris. Those were like the first big names I really knew that were the guys that were influencing how I was as a bass player. And then when I got into like some other stuff, like Billy Sheehan was a bass player I discovered who was just, yeah. I mean, he's probably, I'd probably say he's probably the best rock bass player there is. It's just like... And still going strong. Today. Yes, still going strong. Excuse me, still going strong. And not only was he just a good virtuoso bass player that could do all the crazy soloing. I mean, he's a great songwriter. And he was a part of you know, some of the biggest, best super groups. You know, David Lee Roth Band, right. Steve Vai, Mr. Mr. Big with Paul Gilbert. And even his solo stuff. I mean, it's, it's amazing. He's a good songwriter, too. And that's always been something that's inspired me is that... I didn't want to just be a good bass player. I really always wanted to push the songwriting side. That's why I learned how to play guitar solely so I could show guitar players my riffs or my ideas or be able to explain it in their terms. And it's helped my bass playing even because I understand where a guitar player might be coming from with stuff. So when I'm doing my bass parts, I, I know both sides. Very nice. Uh, today, Trivium has uh, released five studio albums. Um, Ember to Inferno in 2003, Ascendancy in 2005, Crusade, Shogun and In Flames, and now your most recent in 2011. S since you started with 2000 in 2004, out of those albums, which one to you are you most proud of and why? I think Ascendancy and Waves are probably my probably my most are the most important to me because I mean Ascendancy being the first album I joined with the band, it was just such a big moment for for me as a person to be on a, a major label putting out an album and the fact that it did so well was just even nothing I could have ever comprehended or imagined and uh, this new record just because it was the first with Nick and it was sort of the first of us kind of turning things around we were sort of in a, a bad spot before that and we turned that bad situation into something really good and in waves was sort of the culmination of all the things we had to do to turn it around and so it was sort of like our new beginning again and the first one being with nick and just having a good time again so those two in particular are probably the ones i'll i'll look back and be like you know those were two really important albums and moments for us good deal um are these the pinnacle of trivium or is that uh, project yet to come i definitely always think that's something that we're still striving towards i mean you know the fact that ascendancy did so well was really out of the blue i think uh, i mean when it first came out you know it was definitely it generated some good press and then it was like like a flip of a switch it like started doing really good especially over in the uk and i think ozfest definitely helped us over here when we did that tour so i mean we definitely have a lot more to go and i think now with nick it's you know we're just starting and we're writing the album now and it's like with Nick in mind not like how before it was like half the album was written while Travis was in the band then the other half is while Nick's in the band so this is like the first full album that's going to be Nick Augusto's the drummer of Trivium you know we're going to really push our music and our writing much further than I think even in Waves was and you have, you have to always be able to try to strive for something better than what you've done I mean exactly. we have a lot of albums be that have, have meant a lot to a lot of people so we have to live up to those but we have to push it further for ourselves and just see how much further we can push it i guess right on what does the future hold for trivium and even yourself well it's a lot of touring that's for sure i mean i can't say what's going to happen next or next year but i know that until december we're touring our asses off so that's that's for sure all right. Um, where can Maddie Rock's listeners keep up with uh, information on you as well as the band and all the kick-ass music that you guys are putting out? I know you're big on. Uh, I know you're big on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you can follow the band on Twitter. You can follow all, each of us on there. And there's the main Trivium Facebook. I think it's Trivium Official on Facebook. And Trivium.org can also send you to all those different different sites. So I mean, we're very active on it and. If anyone ever has a question or wants to know where we're playing, there's a very, very big list right now 
up there. So you should check it out and see if we're coming to town. Right on. If you had the opportunity to say something to uh, Maddie, Ro- Maddie Rock's listeners who will hear this interview in the U.S. or around the world, what message would you like to send to them? Well, I guess if you don't know who we are, um, I, I guess the best thing would be to get on YouTube and look up some of our recent performances. I think our live shows speak for us the best. I mean, our albums, definitely, we put a lot of time. They sound great, but I think there's definitely always that X factor that you can't, or that's really hard to get onto an album that you get live. And I think we've really been on fire lately when it comes to our live performances. So check us out there, check out our music. And if we're in town and you want to come out and see us, definitely make sure to come out and bring some friends because we always have a good time. Thanks, Paulo, for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. Continued success to all members of Trivium um, and in the future. And uh, you've heard it here, Many Rocks listeners, on the road with Many Rocks with Paulo Regaletto of Trivium. Uh, stay tuned for a few tracks from the band, and uh, Many Rocks out. Thanks again. Thank you.